In today's tutorial, we are going to begin building the album cover and the base pages for our album. So to start, I have two pieces of my cardstock cut to 10 and 3 quarters by 8 and 3 quarters. Now at the bottom, I have a half inch, a line one half inch up from the bottom edge, a horizontal line on both of my pieces, just as a guideline for where I'm going to be placing my chipboard. I have my two chipboard covers cut. They are nine and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So I'm going to take one of my covers and one of my pieces of the cardstock. First thing I'm going to do is apply my adhesive to the entire back piece on my chipboard. Now you can use double-sided tape here if you prefer. I just prefer to use my wet adhesive for everything except for if I'm using acetate sheets or vellum, just a personal preference here. But you want to make sure that the entire back surface of this is covered. Now if you are new to following my tutorials, these tutorials are designed to show you the steps. You can pause the video and complete them. So you're not going to see me construct the entire album on camera. I don't tend to sit here and glue things like this on camera either, unless I'm explaining something to you or showing you exactly how to glue something. So just keep that in mind. You can pause the video and resume it whenever you need to as I'm doing the different steps. So I'm going to take my chipboard and I'm just going to place it right on that line that I drew. So that gives me that nice uniform half inch border all the way around all four edges. Then I'm going to take my bone folder and just adhere this down so that it's nice and flat. And I'm going to take this to the back side and just go along the whole entire cover to make sure that that adhesive is smoothed out since I am using that wet adhesive. Now once I have my chipboard down, I'm going to be mitering these corners, but I need to leave some space so I don't want to cut this right up against that corner. I want to leave about one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to do this and then you'll be able to see that it's a little bit over those corners. It's better to have too much than not enough because you can trim it later. And what we're doing is leaving some paper to wrap that point of that corner around that chipboard once all of the papers are fully wrapped. So I'm going to start by just folding over. I always start on the short ends. It doesn't really matter which end you start on. So I'm going to fold over and then I'm going to just use my bone folder to burnish this right up against that edge because I want this to be wrapped really tightly with no puckers in that cardstock. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm just going to start by folding it all the way over. Then I'll hold it in place and use my bone folder right along the edge and then up over the top to create those creases. Now I'm going to take my adhesive and I'm going to apply it on this half inch tab section here. Being careful, making sure I get it all the way down to the edge of that chipboard. And then I'll go ahead and fold this over. Once it starts to adhere, I can go ahead and then start burnishing just like I did previously and then pressing this right over the top. Now I'll do the same thing with the opposite side, adding my adhesive first in that half inch tab area. And then I'm going to fold this side over and make sure that it's nice and tight up against that chipboard. And then burnish this down with my bone folder. Now 
Now, once you have the first side, you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to wrap these corners. So you can come around it like this and tuck this in. Or I just like to go right over the top and then press in and it actually will take it right around that corner. So the same thing here, just right down off the top and then press this in and that little corner will fold over. Then we're going to flip these edges over to start that crease. And just like before, we're going to use our bone folder to crease this nice and tight up against this edge. We'll do the same thing on this side. And now we'll open both of these up. And then here, making sure that you have that corner with a little bit of adhesive on it so that it will adhere closed. And then apply your adhesive to that whole half inch tab section. And then we're going to wrap this around using our bone folder to press this down. Now when I get to these corners here, I want to make sure that that corner, that point is nice and tight and smooth down. And then I will repeat on the fourth tab, making sure that I have my adhesive applied to the entire half inch tab section. Then folding over. Now here I see, there we go. If yours is just barely going to meet, you can do what I did and use your fingers first and then take your bone folder and then smooth the paper out. Again, I wanna make sure that those corners are nice and tight. And now I have my first cover wrapped. So I'm going to take my second piece of cardstock and my second cover and repeat that same process. Now I'm going to do this off camera because you've already seen me do one and it's the same exact process. So I will go ahead and do this one and come back and show you how we'll do the spine piece. Once my cover pieces are done, I've got my spine to finish. So I need one piece of cardstock that measures four and a half by eight and three quarters. And then I have my chipboard that's two and a half by seven and three quarters. Just like on the other pieces, I did a half an inch up from the bottom edge, a, a horizontal line to be able to place my spine piece. Now I'm going to take my spine and apply my adhesive all across the back just like I did for each of my covers. This piece that I'm going to use the cardstock piece is much larger than my spine piece because I'm going to create tabs or wings to attach to my cover. Now this is the lay flat method for the cover if you haven't done this before. It actually allows the cover to lay flat instead of when you wrap it, having the covers not lay completely flat and open. I'm just using the grid on my desk so that I can line this up in the center. So I'm placing this right in the center of my piece and I have one inch tabs on each side. Once I have this on here, I'll go ahead and burnish this down. Next one I'm going to do is on the short ends, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take my bone folder first and run it along the edge, just like I did on the cover pieces. 
Now what I'm going to do is hold this here flat across the chipboard and take my bone folder and press this paper right up against the side of that chipboard and I'm going to then press down to wrap that paper around it and then I'm going to bring my bone folder down the rest of that paper to flatten it. So what happens is these pieces end up going slightly down at an angle, which is what we want. I'm going to do that same thing on the opposite side, starting first with the center section, getting it flat and around the bottom part. And then once I have this flat, I will hold this, push it against the edge, and then flatten that wing down at an angle. Now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to take my adhesive and apply it to this entire half inch section here. And then I'm just going to close this up and repeat what I just did, making sure that it's nice and firm against that chipboard and then flat across those wings. I'm going to burnish that down really well. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing with the opposite side, adding my adhesive first to that whole entire half inch tab section. And then making sure that it's nice and flat across the chipboard, making sure it's tight against those edges and then flattening those little wings off to the side. Once I have my piece like this, I'll go ahead and turn this over to the back side, and I'm going to use my bone folder to run right along the edge and crease that paper right down the edge of my chipboard, and I'm going to do that on both sides. So when I flip back over, this paper is flat with my chipboard piece. Now I'm going to apply my covers to my spine. So I'm going to use my ruler as a guide to make sure that these are straight. First thing I'm going to do is take my spine piece and I'm going to add my adhesive to this one inch tab section being careful not to go on top of that spine piece because you will end up seeing that adhesive if you do. So I'll just go ahead and adhere or apply the adhesive to this one whole one inch section. And I'll take my cover. This I'm going to make sure is flat up against my ruler and then I'm going to place this flat against the ruler and right next to my spine. You'll notice there is not a gap like when you do the wrap method and you have to leave that gap for the fold. You don't have to do that in this method. So you wanna make sure that that is right up against the other piece. Now I'm going to flip my piece over to make it easier for me to apply my second cover. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other side, first applying my adhesive to this entire one inch tab section, being very careful that I don't go too far and hit that top of that spine section so that I don't end up seeing that adhesive when my album is finished. Now I'm going to use my ruler again. I'm going to line this up so everything's nice and flat up against it. Then I'm going to take my cover and place everything down. So you'll see everything is flat against that ruler. These two are flush up against each other. And then I'll just burnish this down. 
ahead and flip to the back side. And now we have our covers. We need to add one more piece here to the center to cover up the spine on the inside. This piece measures four and a half by seven and a half. Now I'm going to take my adhesive here and apply it to the entire back side of this piece. If you are using double-sided tape, again, make sure that this entire piece is covered because you do not want this to end up lifting off of your spine section because this is where the hinges are going to go and then the pages will be attached to that. So we need to make sure that this is in the album really well. And once I have my adhesive on here, I'm just going to go ahead and apply this right over top of this section. I'm using these two sides as a guide and then I'm centering it top and bottom because it will be an eighth of an inch shorter on top and bottom because that's the size of our pages. So I'm going to just go ahead and adhere this down and burnish it with my bone folder. If you are new to mini albums and you have not used a bone folder before, if you don't have one, make sure you go out and get one. If you have made lots of mini albums but you don't use a bone folder, I recommend that you use one. It just helps everything to lay flatter and really makes a difference in folding and creasing your stuff. I'm going to leave this piece just like this and let it dry before we go ahead and bend these folds so that we don't get any puckers in here once we do start to bend this. And as I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to bring my scoring board in and we're going to work on our hinges. So I have my two pieces for my hinges. The first one measures two and a half by seven and a half. On the two and a half inch side, I'm going to score this at one half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two inches. My second piece is three and a half inches by seven and a half inches. On this piece, I'm going to score this one at one half inch at one inch. One and a half inches, two inches, two and a half, and three inches. For each of the hinges on the outer half inch hinge, we are going to miter that corner from the score line in. And the reason we're doing this is it's going to make it easier for those pocket pages to slide down on when we go to assemble the album at the end. Those pages will slide down that mitered section and then stop right at that score line where it needs to be because it won't be able to go any further. So we're only going to do those outer sections on both of our hinge pieces because this one is going to go on top of this so we'll have our four hinges but we need to prepare these pieces so i'm going to start with my smaller one i like to fold in the center hold and then burnish down with my bone folder then i will open up and fold the next one down and hold it in place while i burnish with my bone folder then I'll take my bone folder and repeat this on all of these score lines. Just being careful, making sure that the paper stays nice and straight as I'm doing this. Then once I have it folded in one direction, I'm going to fold and burnish in the opposite direction so that my pages will be able to flip a little bit easier once they are in the album. So I have my first hinge section complete and I'm going to do the same thing with the second one, starting in the center, burnishing, 
foundation and folding and burnishing on all the score lines, first in one direction, then I will flip this over and fold in the second direction. Once I have this one finished, I'm going to take two tabs over to one side and burnish down and then fold these other two tabs over to the other side and burnish this down. It's going to give you three pieces in the back here that are going to be the center section of your spine. On this one, I've got just that half inch center section and I'm going to place adhesive on this entire section. We're going to adhere the two hinges together first and then we will add them to the spine on the album cover. Once you have this entire section covered, you're going to apply it into the center half inch section here that's what these score lines are for so that you don't have to eye this or measure it. You can just place these score lines right on top of each other. I'm going to fold those two hinge pieces over so that I can see this a little bit better and line this up. And fold this over and make sure everything is lined up that way. And now I will burnish this down. I'm going to set my hinge aside for just a minute and work on the final part of my album. So I'm going to take my bone folder right in that crease where those pieces meet, where the cover and the spine meet. I'm going to just run my bone folder in there first just to give it a little bit of a crease. And then I'm just going to lift up on my front cover and then burnish. You wanna be careful here that you don't push too far with that point because you can go through the paper. I accidentally did that on one album one time. Now I'm just gonna flip over. It makes it easier for me to do this. I'm going to run my bone folder right down that crease and I'm going to fold this all the way over. And now I have my cover. So it will lay completely flat. And then when you have your album, you have that nice clean spine. I'm going to then add my hinge piece, but before I add my adhesive, I'm going to mark this. So this is, I'm using a centering ruler. So I also recommend a centering ruler for using, for making a mini album, but if you don't have one, you can just measure a half an inch from the edge, but it's three quarters of an inch from center. So if you're not using a centering ruler, a half an inch from that crease. You're gonna mark on both sides. Right on this paper that we put on the spine that's an eighth of an inch shorter on top and bottom. Now that three sections of the half inch the three half inch sections on the back of the larger hinge, that's the middle, we're going to apply our adhesive to that entire section. And that's what we are going to adhere to the spine in the album. We're going to use those marks that we just put on there as a guide for squaring this up so that it is centered. So once I have my hinge, I'm just going to set this right down 
lining up the edge with the edge of the actual paper itself because the paper is seven and a half inches. So I've got my two guides there and there. Once I know it's placed correctly, I will go ahead and flatten this completely, making sure it doesn't shift, holding it in place, and then burnishing this down. So now we have our hinges in our album and our album cover for now is complete. Before we finish with this video, we're going to really quickly make the base pages for the album. We're going to be making our base pages, four of them. So you're going to need to cut four pieces that measure nine inches by eight and a half inches. Now on the eight and a half inch side, you are going to take this on your scoring board and score this at one half inch and at eight inches. Then taking your scissors, you're going to start at that score line and you are going to miter that corner on both of these tab sections. And this just makes it easier for the photo mat to slide in and out of the pocket when you go to make those pages. So four of these pages, and then four of these ones that measure nine inches by seven and a half inches. We'll be taking the one with the two tabs on it and we're going to fold these over and use our bone folder to burnish these folds down. Now I like to go from the centers outward and I hold my flaps down. That way it keeps it from, actually it didn't work that time. It actually moved when I did that. So I'm going to recrease this because I want this line to be as straight as possible. And I'm going to burnish on both sides to keep this nice and flat. Then I'll take my adhesive and I'm just going to do this on one tab at a time. So I'll apply my adhesive here to this first half inch tab section. And then I'm going to take this second piece and I'm going to line up that top edge and the sides, making sure everything is nice and square together. And then I'm going to hold this in place and then I'll burnish this down. Then I'm going to apply my adhesive to the second half inch tab section and close up my page to form that pocket page. So to do that, I'm going to smooth from the one I had down first and then smooth this flat so that it's nice and crisp and tight and the pocket doesn't have a ton of room in it. And then I'm going to do this on both sides just to make sure that everything is again nice and creased and adhered down. Then I mark my pages, page one, two, three, four on front and back. That way when I'm building these, I remember if they get out of order, where they go. So I have my other three done already. So you wanna go ahead and do all four of your pages and then that's your pocket. So we've already done the cover and now we've got our base pages. Now with the rest of the tutorial, we will build up page one front and back. Then we'll do a separate tutorial for page two front and back, a separate tutorial for page three front and back and a separate tutorial for page four front and back. Then we'll get into the decorative papers. I'll see you in the next tutorial.